Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Benelict, and today we're going to be looking at Stream Analytics jobs and be using those with Event Hubs and Service Bus. Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about Azure Stream Analytics. Now, Stream Analytics is a service that is intended for live data or streaming data as it moves through the system. Now, we've talked about a number of platforms that do a messaging type workload, such as Service Bus, Event Grid, Event Hubs, and these kinds of things. Now, Stream Analytics gives us a way to process that data as it's moving through the system. So, what we're going to be doing with this is taking the data in one particular messaging platform in the in the case of our example today we're going to be using event hubs and we're going to process that data you can apply filters to it you can amend it you can do all kinds of things with that data and once that data has been processed then you can output that data to some kind of other system typically a service another event grid that's going to be more of a live output that is going to be consumable by some client that's going that can read that data in real time if you were going to be doing something that didn't have the requirements of real time data, stream analytics would probably not be the best solution for that because that would mean that you're going to incur a lot of cost and you're not going to get a lot of benefits from it. You could use something more batch oriented and that would be something like data factory or, or Azure Synapse. Now with stream analytics, you can output the data to a cold storage like SQL database or storage account or what have you. But the intent of this is to keep the data moving. It's to be able to process the data while it's in flight. So let's go over and look at how this works. And then we'll go and look at an example that I've put together that's going to use some live data. And we'll be able to see that data move through a particular workflow that I've set in Azure. So for my demo today, I'm going to be using Event Hubs of Stream Analytics. This is probably one of the canonical use cases for Stream Analytics. And the two services work really well together. Uh, event Hubs is a place that you can push messages to. So to get those messages into an Event Hub, I needed to generate those from somewhere. So my producer in this case is going to be my firewall. And my firewall generates a lot of traffic in terms of events. And so it's a good source for doing these kinds of demos with. And you can use anything for this. You could use something like an IoT device, whatever you've got that will produce messages. But the basic workflow is going to be the same regardless of what's producing the event. Now, in this case, of course, the firewall events are going to be published as messages onto the event hub. And then the event hub is going to provide those as a stream into Stream Analytics. Now, Stream Analytics has two different kinds of inputs that it can have. It can have a stream, which is where it's going to get data from an event hub. And it can also use reference data from more static sources, something that might be stored in something like blob storage or a SQL database. And so what the stream analytics can then do is take the stream analytics data from the stream and also this reference data and then join them together, filter, amend data. It can do all kinds of data manipulation using a SQL-like syntax inside of stream analytics. And this is a powerful language and I'm not going to be able to do it justice because it's simply just not uh, enough time to do it. But the docs do get plenty of examples on how to use it. But once you have a stream analytics job set up with that SQL data, you can aggregate data in a number of different ways. Then you can output that data. In our case, we're going to be using service bus. Now the output from this can be, you know, some kind of other messaging platform, another event hub service bus. Thus, or it can be static data. You could write it to something like blob storage or SQL database, whatever it might be. But the purpose of using the stream analytics with the output is so that you're doing this in real time. Now, you can have the expectation that data being written from stream analytics is going to be landed in a type of cold storage if the expectation is that you want the latest data in that cold storage, such as an, a pen table in a SQL database. And an API might be querying against that in that case. But that would be an acceptable use case for using something like a static output in the, for a streaming uh, type workload that we're going to be looking at today. But in our case, we're going to be looking at service bus in conjunction with a consumer. And I'm going to be using Service Bus Explorer as the consumer. So I'm basically just going to set up a listener to receive messages that are coming off of the Service Bus that have been published to the Service Bus by a Stream Analytics workload. So this is going to be my setup here. So I basically have a lot of different Azure services right here. This is all Azure. 
And this is all running on premises right here. This is my firewall, which is on premises, and this is gonna be running on premises as well. So this is gonna be generating a lot of data out of my firewall. I'm gonna filter and amend it using my stream analytics, and then I'm ultimately gonna consume that using a client that's gonna be here on my local machine. So this is the code for the agent that is acting as the syslog daemon for my firewall. So basically what's happening is my firewall is sending all its messages to this little syslog daemon. And then this is receiving those messages and then doing a little bit of scrubbing on them and then sending them up to an event hub. This is written in Node.js and just serving as the intermediator between the firewall and what's going up to event hub. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over this code, but basically it looks like this when it's running. It's just sending up messages that look like this. So this is the payload that we can expect to see inside of our queries that we're going to be running inside of our stream analytics workload. So now I'm here in the Azure portal, and this is the resource group where I have everything that I have deployed for this particular demo. Now, the event hub that I'm gonna be using is this one right here. This is where that daemon is forwarding the logs onto the actual event hub that is gonna be used by my stream analytics job right here. And this is configured to persist the data into this storage account right here whenever the messages come through the event hub. But the stream analytics is really what I'm going to be interested in here. And it's going to be using this same storage account for static data as well. So if I look inside of this particular storage account, this is the particular container that is receiving the logs where the data is being persisted from the event hub. And this is the static data. And it really just contains a single file called firewall rules. And this is the data that I want to do some correlations with uh, to join the actual data coming across the stream into this so that the data is enriched before it goes onto the service bus. So let's go ahead and crack open the stream analytics job right here. Now the stream analytics job is pretty straightforward. I currently have it in a stopped state and I'm going to start it up in a minute, but I wanted to discuss this uh, in a little bit more detail because this is kind of the crux of what we're getting at here. So there's basically two things that you'll need with a stream analytics work job. You need inputs and outputs and what glues those together is a query. Now the query itself is written in something that looks like SQL. And there's a lot to this that I could not even begin to do justice to in a short video like this. But what it basically allows you to do is take the streaming data and other data sources and aggregate those, massage that, transform it, whatever it might be, and then have it write the results back to an output. And that output can be any number of things. So what I have here for my inputs is two different kinds of data. The stream analytics is coming off my event hub. And so that's my firewall events that are coming from the firewall. So it's going firewall, syslog daemon, event hub into stream analytics. And that's where this is coming from, the source right here. And this is that static data that I showed you just a second ago in the container that is sitting in a blob storage account. So it's got both of these as the inputs for this particular workload. And the outputs for this or a service bus queue. And this one is called uh, FW events. And you can wire up a number of different kinds of outputs for this. You can do it into an Azure function, for instance. You can trigger, uh, you can write it to a Cosmos DB or, or a Postgre database, or you could put it back on some kind of messaging platform such as event hubs or another service bus queue or topic, or you can just write it to uh, some kind of storage account with a table storage. So there's a lot of different options that you have right here for the outputs from this. Now, the intent behind a lot of the stream analytics, of course, is to provide a stream of data that is going to be readily available once the results of this are done. So even if you're writing it to one of these more uh, cold storage options, such as Cosmos Cosmos DB or a SQL database, the intent of this is to have the output written in a way that is going to be readily available as soon as the job is finished. So if it's an API that's going to be calling data out of the Cosmos DB or the SQL database, it should be available the instant that the stream analytics job is done. So that will write it. And then the API, the very next second can query that data and return that back to whatever the consuming client might be. So that's kind of the intent behind this rather than something that's more batch oriented. So with that in mind, those are the kind of two ends of the spectrum. And in between of those, of course, is the query. So my query is pretty straightforward. I'm basically doing two things in this. I'm joining data and I'm filtering data. So the join that I'm doing right here is basically 
the join between the the stream and the the static data that is the rules so this is basically enriching the data with the actual nature of what's inside the firewall rule that is being logged in the firewall and then the filter is this one right here i'm just basically looking for firewall events where the actual event was something that the firewall blocked and so this should have a descriptor of everything that I need to kind of look at what was going on inside of my firewall event that got blocked. And so if I run this, um, I should get something that uh, where, where I should be able to get something that will let me see what's going on here. So this is telling me no input data for firewall rules. So to test this, I actually have to upload a simple file uh into this particular stream analytics and i have that right here and um this will allow me to run test queries because that's static data it's not going to pull it from the actual source so if i test this query it's actually going to be looking at what's on the event hub in the current state so i can kind of see what's going on here and this is what i would expect to see in what the output of this is going to look like so this is the test results if i can zoom out on this a little bit and scroll over I should see all the data that would end up going into the service bus. And you can see that this has been enriched by the client address, the service address, the server country, what rule um, was violated, what the port numbers were, uh, all these different things that are relevant to a blocked event on my particular firewall. And I can see that the rule that most of these are gonna be coming from is you know, the catch all, the block all rule. And I can see, yeah, it blocks something. And then I could go over here and look at the data to figure out what was going on. Okay, it looks like this was a, a universal plug and play that was trying to reach out to something that was on the internet. And it's just blocking that at the firewall because I haven't allowed that on my firewall. In fact, I don't want that going out of my firewall. So that is the uh, firewall rules that are getting blocked. Now, when I turn this on, I should expect these results to show up on the service bus and I can listen to that. So I'm gonna go over to Service Bus Explorer and start that up and then listen for these things as they come off of my Stream Analytics job. So you can see kind of what the output of this is gonna look like in that context. Okay, I've got Service Bus Explorer started right here and I've linked it up to my uh, service bus already. In fact, you can use this to watch event hubs and other types of traffic coming through this as well because fundamentally like i said in another video event hubs is fundamentally based on service bus so for this i'm going to right click on my particular queue here i'm going to say create queue listener and this is basically just going to start listening for messages that comes in on this queue and i should be able to see the messages here so i've now got this started uh once that starts i'm going to go over to the azure portal and I'm going to start this particular uh, stream analytics job up because currently it's not running. I have it in a stopped state. So what this should do is start the stream analytics job doing the aggregation and the filter based on the query and then pushing that onto the service bus. And once it does, I should see that happening in real time. So the results of what's happening on my firewall log should be showing up in the service bus explorer with that listener and pretty much real time. So with very little lag between the source of the event and the actual consumption of that event. So let's go ahead and start this and let's see what happens. So I got that started and let's see what happens as this comes up. So I got that starting in the background and we'll come back whenever this starts sending messages through. Okay, now that that is started, we are beginning to see the messages come through the, the service bus here and uh, we should be seeing the the same data that we saw a minute ago so let's look at these uh, various messages that we are getting here and we're seeing the various types of, of data that we saw on the the query that we had so we're getting blocked basically blocked to firewall events with the data that's been enriched uh, and it's streaming a whole lot of data into this particular listener now so all these are blocked events and as more data comes through we see these streaming down here in the log. So this is just basically the output from everything that's coming up from my firewall into my service bus, which is then ending up into this consumer. And I'm able to see that 
happening basically as it comes through. So hopefully this has kind of shown you the intent of what you can do with a stream analytics job. And we also got to see it glue two different platforms together, Event Hubs with Service Bus. Now we've looked at Service Bus already and Event Hubs and how you can use those in different contexts. But the idea behind something like a stream analytics job or an Azure function or some other kind of middleware between these two different messaging platforms is that you can have something in the middle that kind of creates an entire end-to-end -end work Flow, and then you create something that can do something that can glue together various kinds of messaging platforms so that you can move data along and then massage it and transform it, aggregate it, and do a lot of different kinds of functions all the while you're moving it through a live type data stream. So the intent behind this one was not only to show you the streaming analytics side of things, but to show you a couple of different platforms and how you can build what we call a hot path for your data. We're gonna be looking at a video in the future where we're gonna be addressing when to use which platform. We haven't addressed a storage queues yet, which we'll probably do a video on that as well, but these are just a couple of different ways that you can handle the kinds of messaging on Azure. And there's a lot of different ways to do it and a lot of ways to create architectures that support various kinds of workloads. And hopefully when we do that video, it's gonna kind of look at this synoptically. It'll give you a better idea of when you might wanna choose one over the other. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.